Good morning. So recently I was talking about creating lasagna gardens. And one of the components in those lasagna designs that I use is wood chips. Now, there is some controversy about wood chips and using those in your gardens as mulch. Some people have said, hey, I grow everything in, uh, in wood chips. Other people have started realizing that there is a difference between soil that is created by decomposing wood chips and the garden soil that some of your plants are familiar with. So I'm going to talk a little bit about why that is this morning and also about how maybe both sides could be right. So, so are wood chips better for fruit trees or for your vegetable garden? I would say on the whole, you want to use wood chips more with your fruit trees as a mulch than with your vegetable garden for many reasons. You know, first off, the, the roughness of wood chips can actually do physical damage to delicate garden plants. So that's one reason you might want to be a little careful with that. If you just want to, you know, if you want to, if you want to keep your mulch up, yes, you can start it in the spring and the plants will just go around it. But if you have to fill in spots later on, then wood chips aren't really an easy thing to fill in around delicate plants. Just a thought. Um, other reasons why, uh, why they are better for trees than for, uh, for your, your regular kitchen garden, that really comes down to the type of soil that is created by decomposing wood chips as opposed to the type of soil that is created by decomposing green material. So your kitchen garden, the place where you're going to plant your lettuces, your kale, that sort of thing, it is probably not terrible to, to, to plant those things into wood chip mulch. However, the soil that they prefer is soil that is basically full of bacteria. Now the soil that you create when you put down wood chips has more fung fungal matter than bacteria in it. So both kinds of garden soil and sort of the wood chip created soil, which is much more like, say, the forest floor. Um, they both have nutrients in them, but one of them has more fungi, the other one has more bacteria. And, and so, you know, they, 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 there's crossover, but there's just more of one in one, more of another in the other. So your garden generally, and this is just generalities, will possibly perform better if it is dominated by bacteria rather than fungus, but you still need some of that, that fungal growth in there too to, to protect against um, you know, certain, certain types of unfriendly uh, bacteria. Um, so anyway, Without getting into that, there's a great book. Uh, it's called Teeming with Microbes. You can get that. Uh, I'll try and put a link to that down below in the comments. But Teeming with Microbes goes into this much more detail, and it's a great book. So the gist, however, is that in being dominated by fungus, the soil that you're creating with wood chips will become slightly more acidic, and that is because the fungus uses acids to break down those large chunks of carbon, basically. So those large chunks of wood, the fungus works its way through and is working its way through. It uses acid to break them down. That acid is, uh, it becomes, creates a more acid environment in the soil. And just 
speaking in broad generalities, that's more conducive to uh, growing trees than it is to growing vegetables. But like I said, there are exceptions to that rule all over the place. So bacterial dominated soil will be probably a little closer to neutral, which is to say it, more alkaline than the acid soil that we were talking about with the wood chips, but actually not necessarily tipping over the seven uh, bar, which would put it into the, the pure alkaline, you know, into the much more alkaline state. Seven is neutral, and so you may get something in the range of that with a bacterially dominated soil. So slightly more alkaline, but not necessarily, strictly speaking, alkaline soil, if you're following me on that. You might get a 6.5, you might get a 7.5. If you get a 6.5, it's slightly acid. If you get a 7.5, it is slightly alkaline. The inner range. The reason for that is that bacteria, instead of using acids to digest things, I'm not actually sure what they use to digest things, but what they create more of is they create sort of a slimy substance. And that slimy substance helps to hold them onto the smaller particles that they are working on. It also helps to bind the smaller particles together in the soil. That slimy substance, kind of like what you would see on a bigger scale from, say, a slug, that slimy substance is more alkaline. And so that is because there's more, um, there's more bacteria in the soil you will have in your kitchen garden soil, if you prepared it right, it will be slightly more alkaline. So that will happen more in, in like kitchen compost, you know, compost that you make from your kitchen scraps or worm, uh, worm compost, vermicompost. That will be more toward the alkaline side of the scale than the acid side of the scale, ideally. And that is not always true because quite often when people compost things, they end up getting an acid product in the end because it's composting in an anaerobic kind of situation, but that's getting into other kinds of uh, science that we're not covering today. Today we are just talking about the differences between the two soils and why they're different. So, so why is this important? I would say it's not as important as people think. And that is why you get people who are very successful with their, their kitchen gardens that might have lots of uh, mulch worked into the soil. You also get people who are not doing as well with that, and that, that can be due to so many different factors. Part of it could be they're just planting different things. If you're planting potatoes and tomatoes and having great results with those in your wood chip mulch, that stands to reason because those are very those are those are vegetables that can actually deal with a a whole range of uh, of soil acidi acidity levels you know pH so that's you know that might be why that works if you're planting um, you know certain more particular plants, like say you're planting blueberries and you're planting them into a neutral to slightly alkaline soil, you probably won't have as good result with that. That is a, it's a, a fruiting shrub that really actually does like more acid soil. So if you get too far up toward the alkaline range, I got a, a, a chart that I was, that I put up on, um, a recent video and you can actually it's it's on the website um, you can go and take a look at foodforestgardenclub.org uh, just scanning the list for a good example so blueberries blueberries can tolerate way down to a pH of four that's a really acid soil that's that's about as far down as almost any plant goes um, they and they really like their pH to be six or less. So they they're they are one of the few few plants 
that I would say you kind of have to be more careful with in terms of your pH if you want them to perform ideally. Now I've made a mistake and planted some of my blueberry plants into a soil that is more like garden soil. And so I'm kind of in an experimental phase. None of them have died on me. Uh, I think I'll probably see what I can do to put some wood chips around them and maybe lower the pH of the soil directly around the blueberries just to give myself a little bit more of an advantage with those because they're not performing as well as I would hope, but they are surviving. So like I said so many times before, you work with what you've got, you try to improve it, but sometimes you end up planting things into a slightly less than ideal situation. If you study what the ideal situation is, you may be able to improve their performance, or you might just find, like with the lettuce seeds that I drop into mulch, it turns out that they grow just fine in the mulch that I happen to have. It might not work for you, but it works for me. So much of gardening is location. So these things that work for me, these things that work for people who, who practice kitchen gardening in wood chip mulch, it might not just be the wood chip mulch, it might be that it's perfect for their region or that it's advantageous for their region and it helps them, say, retain lots of moisture where things in other garden beds that they've planted tend to dry out. So the things that have more moisture planted in that wood chip mulch are naturally going to do better just because they have that moisture and aren't drying out all the time. They're not going to have to worry so much about drought. So it might not be the pH level that's making the difference. It might actually be the moisture content. Um, entirely possible, but hard to say. The other thing is to understand that because most plants are tolerant of a slightly acid soil, even the plants that you're planting for vegetables in your garden, they are usually tolerant of a slightly acid soil. You have more play on, in, the, in the acid range than you do in the alkaline range if you're looking across a broad spectrum of plant types. If you have to plant every plant into the same soil, you would want to choose something that is slightly below a pH of 7, something around a 6. So anyway, that wood chip fungal dominated soil for some people probably works really great and probably for some of the reasons that I'm talking about here. So is there a controversy? Absolutely, there's always a controversy in gardening. There's always somebody who's doing it a better way. There's always an old way that's getting thrown out the window. My suggestion is get yourself some wood chips, put them down, let them go for, uh, hopefully you can get them uh, that are at least one season old, but if you've got fresh wood chips, you might want to let them sit around for a season before putting them on a part of your garden. Do that, put them on a part of your garden, plant some of the things that are more uh, tolerant of acid soil, like your tomatoes, your potatoes, uh, and you know, I'm sure you can, you can find a list or you can look on the foodforestgardenclub.org site, the pH list and graphs that I put up there. Uh, and make your decision about what to plant in there and give it a try. But you know what? Don't hold back, throw a couple other things in there too and just see what happens, because it might turn out that that, for reasons other than the whole pH thing, other than the fungal bacterial dominant, maybe they're just working, and maybe you don't know why. And you don't have to know why. You don't have to understand everything about your garden. The important thing is to build soil, to do some experiments, try, see what works for you, and, and hopefully, make yourself a, a, a great gardening space, a beautiful yard, provide some good food for your family. So thank you so much for joining me. I would really appreciate a thumbs up. I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to this, if you're enjoying my channel. And I would love to hear your thoughts below. I know this is a controversial topic. And so I want to hear, what do you think about this? Should people just never plant their kitchen gardens in wood chips? Or do you think maybe it's not a bad thing to experiment? All right. Thank you so much and enjoy your day.